of you, we're at a time in the church where there's incredible dissent and disagreement. A lot of that dissent and disagreement has to do with identity and who we are. Uh, what would you say about how we navigate that, uh, the differences? How do we navigate the differences and the dissent? I think part of the way we navigate any dissent or disagreement is to listen first. I think we listen first and we try to understand, you know, and we all know the, the uh, adage, you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth in direct proportion to how much we should use them. And so to be inquisitive and to listen and to try to understand why do you believe that? Before we get defensive, uh, to take the time to listen and to try to understand where the other person's coming from. I think we have to give people the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so we try to assume the best of the other person instead of the worst. And if, if we're gonna have a meaningful conversation, if we're just gonna try to persuade people of what we believe without, you know, without anything else, we just come up with our best arguments. But I find very few people are persuaded about, you know, really intense issues of disagreement simply by our persuasive, you know, by offering a better argument. It often has to do with relationships and with trying to listen and trying to understand and then having conversations where we share, you know, from our from our personal perspective. Um, and I think whenever we do this to the degree that we can do it with love, I think about Paul talking about, um, uh, you know, and he was he was citing the Old Testament and he was talking about your, you know, when your enemies, you know, uh, talking about your enemies and, and that, you know, you you show kindness to them. And, and I, hate, I don't like the fact that he included the line, you know, and in this way you're pouring, burning, burning coals on their head. But but he uh, but he goes on to say, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And and our opponent isn't evil. Jesus tells us to love our you know love our enemy. But in the United Methodist Church, the other is not our enemy, and they're not evil. They're just people who have a very different set, way of maybe reading scripture on certain things. And so what I want to try to do is to try to demonstrate love and kindness, and at the very least. Uh, you might disagree with what I've said, and I might disagree with what you've said, but we've still tried to demonstrate what Jesus calls us to do, and that's to love, uh, love the other. And uh, that, I think, might hold, hold the possibility of holding people together in tension and actually learning and growing from the other as opposed to uh, just alienating each other. And that's really hard, and I haven't always done that perfectly either. There, there are examples where I've just gotten mad, mad and frustrated. And, and uh, and not always. And there are times I think you have to get mad, and there are times where you have to say, "This is just not okay. This is not okay, and I can't be a part of it." But I think to the degree that we can, demonstrating uh, the willingness to listen and demonstrating kindness and uh, assuming the best of the others is usually helpful. Elizabeth, what would you say about that? Uh, you're on a college campus. You're in local church ministry, um, going into ordained ministry eventually. Um, how do you how do you deal with navigating the the differences that we're experiencing in our church. Well, I definitely agree the, with the words that Adam said, that those are wise words, but I believe that we need to have humble spirits. Um, the first pastor that I served under, um, he had a saying that he lived by well, and he said it often, and he said to be teachable because you aren't always right. And I think that this is something that we forget often, but the saying holds so much truth right now, especially in the midst of the climate of disagreements within the United Methodist Church, but not just disagreements there, disagreements everywhere we go. And I believe that if we want to continue to do effective ministry during this time, it is if we want to grow our church and if we want to be still be people that are effective amidst these disagreements, then we must first humble our spirits and we must be teachable because we aren't God. So there's things that we are wrong about and we have to realize that. I also think that we need to not lose focus of the main thing. I think John Wesley said it very well when he said, though we cannot think alike, may we not love alike. And sometimes we get so caught up in what we disagree with and the differences that we have that we lose focus of that main thing, that we are called to be people of love, people who love God and people who love others. And if we can remember these two things, we can be people of humble spirits and we can be people who have not lost focus of that main thing, then I believe that we and our churches and our ministries, we will be better for it no matter where we end up on the other side of these disagreements within the UMC. I love you, Elizabeth. I have to just say that uh, that when you're finished with seminary, if there's not a place for you in Alabama, call Church of the Resurrection. We'd love to have you. Uh -huh.